evening, and thanks for joining tonight's TI Technology webinar hosted by Texas Instruments. Where tonight, we're going to learn a little more about getting your students to talk about math, which I personally have always found a challenge. My name is Mike Houston, and I'm the moderator for this event. I teach algebra and calculus near Pittsburgh, where I use TI Technology to make tough to teach, tough to learn concepts accessible to all my students. And with us tonight, I'm joined with Veronica Carlson and Kim Thomas. Veronica is a high school math teacher, I'm sorry, Veronica was a high school math teacher for 35 years, uh, presented and worked with teachers throughout the country, helping them integrate TI technology into their classrooms to help students have a greater understanding of mathematics. Uh, currently, Veronica is working as a systemic coach, working with teachers to enhance instructional practices and strengthen student learning. So Veronica, it's great to have you with us tonight. I'm happy to be here, Mike. Thank you. And Kim is a national board certified teacher who currently teaches college algebra along with both AP Calculus AB and BC at Moon Valley High School in Phoenix. She's passionate about students' exploration, understanding, communication, and engagement. As a fun fact, Kim has decided to have a personal goal of banning the word over in math class unless the intended meaning is physical placement. So that's a good challenge, Kim. Thanks for being with us. Happy to be here and great to get students talking. So speaking of talking, Veronica, will you talk about our agenda for tonight? Yeah, well, we're um, doing our welcome and introductions right now, and we're going to have a discussion about instructional routines. And uh, we're going to explore um, four different instructional routines and um, we'll utilize the chat to get your input and to help us um, when we explore those. And we'll also discuss, you know, the importance of them and kind of behind the scenes, you know, why we do those. And um, last but certainly not least, a webinar drawing for a lucky participant. Thanks so much, Veronica. And Kim, will you talk through our expected outcomes? Yes, um, by the end of this webinar, um, our expected outcomes include um, I can use instructional routines in my classroom to provide opportunities for student communication. Um, I can use instructional routines in my classroom to encourage student engagement and I can leverage technology appropriately. Um, not all of our activities are going to have technology. In fact, I think there's less technology than more at this point, but to use it appropriately as part of our instructional routines for learning and teaching mathematics. Thanks so much, Kim. As a reminder, this session is being recorded and we'll provide a link to the event certificate of attendance at the conclusion of the webinar. As both ladies stated, we'll be using that chat window tonight, so make sure your chat window is open and ready to go. And if you have any questions at any time, feel free to use that Q&A window on the right side of your screen for Kim or Veronica. All right, Veronica, you have All control. Right. Feel free to share that screen and we'll get going. All right. All right, here we are. And um, uh, if you want to take a snapshot, if you want to communicate with Kim or I, we're welcome to um, uh, use our emails if that's something that you're interested in. And um, let's get started with what is an instructional routine. Um, so please utilize your chat window and list uh, an example uh, or two of what you think an instructional routine would be in your classroom that you would utilize. And I'll let you, Kim, kind of help to monitor if anybody is um, Absolutely. having anything that you shared. All right, we're starting to get a few routines coming in. Uh, one of those is think, pair, share. We have centers, a do now activity, um, any activity that contributes to the flow of the lesson, a strategy, a tactic, um, daily activities that students do when they enter in their classroom. I do, we do, you do. Awesome. Um, another one, uh, knowing the daily agenda, starting with small. Think of where you see this. 
regular practice right. that provides structure and predictability. Well, those are all wonderful examples and routines are um, an important part of our daily lives and also in the classroom. Um, and then we had some examples there of how we root, root, uh, use routines um, for all sorts of things. So um, why now would these routines be important? Um, and take a moment now to list why would a, an instructional routine be important in your classroom? I like that one right there. Um, form good habits. All right, so we're, we're starting to see them come in. Um, structure. And I think that structure comes on many, many different fronts. Uh, it increases student engagement, sets expectations and intention. There's no surprises. It lowers anxiety. Let students know what to expect. Reduces stress. Reduces stress for us, for the students and for the teacher with, you know, intentional planning. Students are engaged and know what to do. I think that's awesome. Oh, those are awesome. Oops, maximizes use of class time. That one's worth saying as it snuck in there. Okay. Well, uh, and we've heard a lot of these through our chat already, but gives structure to time and, and interactions interactions and it, it's a predictable format for students and so they know what to expect and um, then that lowers everybody's anxiety so that was shared and then it lets students know what to expect in terms of um, participation um, you know it, is it is there going to be some quiet think time um, is it going to be small group or whole group um, some instructional routines are really good for warm ups. It could be just five or 10 minutes. So they know about how long it's going to last. Um, that predictability is especially good for students with disabilities as well. Um, supports classroom management and, and organization. Um, that familiar routine, you know, they know if they need to move their desk, they need to know if they need to get with a shoulder partner or if they need to talk with a group of four, you know, however you um, design it. It provides a flow that governs um, the actions taking place. It um, might not happen otherwise. There'll be some really um, uh, provides opportunities for all the students to um, to do the math or discuss the math. And um, lastly, here on my list, it promotes um, productive classroom relationships for teaching and learning. It allows for conversations that sometimes you wouldn't have. Um, or even thinking about math that you wouldn't have if you didn't give kids uh, this opportunity. And so um, sounds like a lot of our participants are right on and um, instructional routines are um, something that uh, are very important in the classroom. And um, Kim and I just really want to share some of them with you this evening. Uh, a favorite is which one doesn't belong. And uh, there's a website here and um, a fellow T cubed instructor kind of spearheaded this. Um, I think a few years ago and um, so that's a, a website that you can go and get some and people are credited for them and um, people are sharing them but I'm going to move over to my inspire um, software uh, my ti inspire teacher premium software and we're going to experience uh, an ex instructional routine um, um, Let's see. So these are the ones we're going to do. And here's uh, which one doesn't belong. Uh, here's another mathematical practice. It fosters a need to define terms carefully and use words precisely. We always want our students talking about math and using math terms in order to compare and contrast a group of uh, geometric figures or mathematical representations. So that came from our mathematical practices. So um, before I show you the routine, this one's going to be a non math uh, example. And um, we want you to think about it and pick the one that you think doesn't belong. And um, we'll put it in the chat, but you can type it in the chat, but we'll wait for, I'll say the magic word. And we're gonna say graduation will be our magic word this evening. So just to recap, you're gonna see uh, which one doesn't belong. And you're gonna utilize the chat to tell Kim and I and Michael which uh, one you don't think belongs. 
And then when I say uh, graduation, uh, then you will um, push enter on your computer keyboard and then we'll have a discussion. If you think we're taking too long, you can think about why maybe another one wouldn't belong. So, all right, so Veronica, I just want to make sure I have the words clear. I'm going to just place my letter or my letter and my reason. Once we say the uh, magic word that we have it, not said yet. It can be letter and reason. That's right. We don't get to have an out loud discussion. So thank you, Kim, your letter and your reason. So think about these four selections, which one doesn't belong. You're going to have your letter and then comma reason as to why it doesn't belong, but don't hit enter yet. Wait just a few more seconds. Obviously, we can see that this is themed uh, for our seniors and the end of the school year and graduation are coming up soon. So, oh, I heard the word. Right, Kim. <laughs> graduation. <laughs> yeah. Oh. All right, guys, if you want to hit enter. And maybe people are still. Okay, we have all letters represented now. Let's see if I can judge. Okay. If I had a poll up here, I would say B is the most, but we do have all letters here. Um, so some okay. reasons. B, no hat. Um, no graduation cap. It's the simplest. Um, no mortar board. B has no red color. All right, which one would you like to talk about next, Ms. Carlson? Well, um, I'm just going to highlight a couple of things here with this is that um, is there really a right answer to this? And of course not. And that's the idea of it. And uh, Kim and I had fun um, selecting little um, clip arts. And some of those examples are what we came up with. And um, sometimes when Kim and I create these um, for presentations, of course, she uses them with her students and it's always um, interesting to get um, their take on it as well. Um, and so those were wonderful examples. And the point is to help students think of things in different ways. And that's what we do also with our math example. And so the next one will be a math example. We'll use the same magic word and you'll make a selection as to which one you don't think belongs. And um, then we're going to do a little bit of behind the scenes as to how we created these. So here is our which one doesn't belong. And just uh, type your, pick your selection, make your selection, letter selection, and then uh, a little reason as to why. And Kim, do you want to then take it away from here? So then you can uh, let's continue see. the discussion, or do you want me to hold on and then you are ready with the next? I'll, let's let's do this discussion discussion first, then I'll take it. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead and say graduation. Go ahead and push enter. And I will see, I love reading these responses um, just because they're so varied. Yeah. And a lot of good content knowledge here. So I'm seeing it's linear, no curves. Um, do not intersect, only exists in a certain quadrant. Um, it looks like B again is um, yeah. more consistent. Constant. In, in we have the word rotation in here. We have the word slope. I love not curved. Yes. No points of intersection.
Definitely. And this is one again where there's no right answer. Um, but how right. you justify your answer is really the key. Well, that's where those math conversations take place. And in which one doesn't belong, there really shouldn't be one right answer. And that's why you can have those really rich conversations and get students talking. And, um, you know, talking with a shoulder partner that really encourages more discussion. And um, as you walk around, the teacher walks around, you can listen to some of those conversations and um, have students share. And even reluctant students, if you say, oh, that sounded really good, would you be willing to share? Then that gives them a sense of pride and then they're really um, more willing to share with the whole group. And that really helps to get the whole class talking. So um, do you wanna make some comments on this, Kim? On um, Absolutely. Um, how so this one, um, I, I, we want to kind of lead you in into how we create one, because it's one thing to work with one and to go find one, which is definitely good. Um, but this one was one that uh, was created specifically um, for content that I was teaching in college algebra at the time. And we were talking about inverses. And it, as you look at this, there's a lot of things that you have to think about. You have to have four selections that don't overlap but yet overlap. Um, so when this was designed, if you notice every single curve has a different color. And so I, I maxed out my capabilities on my pictures right here. Uh, that gray is a little bit kind of hard to tell that it's not an axis. Um, and that's kind of why the grid line was behind there. Um, I wanted to make sure that I included functions and not functions. And so like, if you look at choice B, that vertical line is not a function but I didn't want to make it the only non-function. So in choice D, I chose a one-to-one -one curve that I chose something that was not one-to-one. -one. And so in the class that I was teaching, I wanted to prime the pump so that they would actually say one-to-one -one or not one-to-one. -one. So, you know, math teachers, if we're just watching this webinar and this wonderful evening right now, like, you don't know those things were going on in the classroom, but I was trying to dig out some of that vocabulary that I taught, as opposed to saying, here's a list of vocabulary, make sure you use it. Um, the fact that uh, some of these are in certain quadrants and not in other quadrants is important. The fact that some intersect and some don't is important. Um, so those are really good details to keep in mind. And this was drafted many times before we got to this version. And there's still things on this version that I would improve upon, but at the same time, I kind of like some of the things in there that I would want to improve for student discussion. So what we want to do is we want to provide you um, with just some basic directions on how you might want to create this on your TI Inspire. So we know not everybody is on a TI Inspire or uses the TI Inspire pieces, um, but we wanted to just give those directions briefly. So I'm going to share my screen. And, and also, Kim, I'm going to uh, just mention that we also know that um, we realize that we, Kim and I have TI Inspire Navigator systems, and we're able to send that to our students to make a selection. But you don't, of course, need that um, in your classroom. You need to have it displayed some way, and students can hold up a card, or you can have your selection, uh, your um, way that you want to collect data from uh, your students, and it does not have to be this way. And um, this is a tool that we use to create it, and we'd like to share it with you this evening as to how we do that. But there are certainly other ways that you can create these, uh, which one doesn't belong to share uh, with your students. All right. So inside the materials that you will get as part of the sort of after, after this video is rendered, there'll be materials that um, you can click on a link to download. And these directions are there. So I'm just gonna go through them briefly and then just know that you can always come back and watch the video or download the actual directions. And so when I created this, I realized that I wanted to do this more often. So like my personal goal for next year is to have a which one doesn't belong that is related to my unit in some way, as opposed to me just scouring the internet, I actually want to create something that was mine. So that was my own personal challenge, which is where this came about. And so what you're going to do 
and I was using graphs at the time, so this works for graphs very well, is that I want to create my document. And so I've already created my four pictures. And what I found on my Inspire is that I was getting certain windows highlighted when I was screen capturing, and I don't want to do that. And so I figured out this workaround, and it took a while to figure out the workaround. And what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to just print the pages. So on your Inspire software, you can print the document. And when you print, you get this beautiful view and you just change it to where you have four screens. Now this document has a lot of different things in it. So I need to actually also add in that I would like to start at a different number. So my page range for my pictures are actually gonna start at 2.1 to 2.4. So when I created it, these were my four pictures. The other thing that I needed to do was switch it to landscape. So once I had this print preview, I could then take a screenshot and put into my calculator. Or here's my screenshot to put into whatever visualization piece that I'm going to use, whether or not I'm going to put this just on the projection board or Maybe I put this on paper. I definitely wouldn't have all these colors if I was doing it that way, but there's lots of different ways that we definitely can present. So you screen capture that. And then into our Inspire, we would actually make this question. So these were questions that were done in our TI Inspires. So these are point on types of questions where you're gonna insert an image and then add the boxes or the choices so that students can pick their answer. And you can also group them, but I found that that wasn't the easiest thing to do. So I created all of these graphs separately, matching the colors, all of those pieces. And then I wanna create this question here. So we're gonna do this live right now real quick. So I'm gonna insert a new problem. And only on the teacher software can you create questions. So I'm gonna insert a question. Remember, it's an image question where you do a point on. And this is where you would say which one doesn't belong. Hopefully I'm typing correctly. I don't That's necessarily, good. I don't necessarily type well, but I do know how to uh, spell. And so the next piece is that there's a button that says insert the image. Now I already screen captured this earlier. It's on my desktop. I'm just going to open it up. And here it is. And there's usually a little bit of finessing that you have to do where you might have to move it around, maybe make it a little bit smaller. This one doesn't want to become smaller. Is it getting smaller now? Looks like it's getting there smaller. Go. So that's the part right here. And then how do I make this so that there's four choices? Because right now there's just one. So I'm going to change from my calculator right here to my toolbox. I'm going to change the responses to four. And I can also change these responses, I believe. Nope, I can't. They're, they're stuck at A, B, C, D. But then I just grab those and move them around. And now I have a quick poll question to send out to my students using the navigator. Or I have a question that could be on the, the calculator file that I'm using. If I create this file, even using online software, I could share this file with students. Um, so there's lots of different possibilities that we can do with it on the Inspire. Mainly, it was a graphing question. I wanted to make sure I had graphs that were familiar to my students, so that's where we started that. So again, there will be a PDF of all these directions along with this TNS file with something already done so that you can even play with this on your own in the documents that we'll be sharing. And Kim, you are not, you went over there to check uh, with the answers, the A, B, C, D, could you change those? And it looked like that was locked, that you are that not able is to locked. The only thing I can do is I can mark yep. these correct. So on this particular right. one, I am stuck with A, B, C, D. Right, okay, all right. Uh, participant wanted clarification on that. Yeah, I can change so. them to boxes and then I can have multiple select, but since right. there is no, like I really want to force students to pick one, so I'm going to change it back to single. Yeah. Yeah, no, and that's the idea, and then to generate all that discussion. So, and again, you can um, create the graphs using your TI Inspire software. Uh, you can also use your TI 84 software, and um, it's excellent to do um, screenshots of those graphs 
and then you can display them, you know, uh, through your smart view um, software. You can display them through your, uh, through a PowerPoint or whatever um, projection uh, device you have. So um, TI Inspire is not the only way um, to, to do this. Um, all right. Well, um, that's which one doesn't belong. And I think, Kim, you're going to go ahead and start off the discussion for um, Notice and Wonder. Um, yes, this. absolutely. Um, so Notice and Wonder, um, a lot of people have heard that we use them in our uh, classrooms. What's really strong uh, with this particular routine is it is one that um, transcends up through the grade level. So Veronica and I are both high school math teachers by trade. And so when students have done this routine in previous grades, it makes it easier for us to pretty much extend on it. And so this won't necessarily come across exactly, but when we do a notice and wonder activity, we really do want to record student responses. And I do want students to have a personal response. So sometimes I'll have them write on paper, sometimes I'll write, write on, a, on a whiteboard. Um, I'll collect them as a whole group in a variety of ways. And so there is some data rec records being kept here so that we can actually have a bigger discussion about all the things that we notice and that we wonder. And so we have a file here um, that I do want to show you. And it's off of my TI Inspire again, and it doesn't have to be, but this is what I did. And so in my classroom, and with other teachers, we have given this particular picture here. And before we do anything, I want my students to look at this and just kind of, what do you notice on the screen right here? And what might, might you wonder about this? So we're gonna do our routine for management right now, where we're gonna give everybody some think time and then we'll say graduation again and uh, let you write in something that you noticed or something that you wonder about what you see up here. All right, graduation. What do you guys notice or what do you wonder? And I have my um, chat window up nice and easy here, Kim. And I see this. Um, why did that point not want to be part of that graph? Oh, I love that one. Um, will the pink dot follow the arrow or the blue fur? Um, y intercept is equal to five. Um, I noticed that the scale on the X and Y axes are not the same. Um, someone is wondering. Is it being traced? Someone noticed that there is a, con a discontinuity, a whole. Um, someone else is um, wondering if it is a piecewise. That's a really someone cool one else, right there. Mm -hmm. Someone else uh, wonders um, about no zeros. Hmm. So lots of really great notice and wonders. Oh, someone uh, noticed the equation. Yeah. So again, you know, getting students talking, um, definitely forcing or providing an opportunity to use academic language without giving them a quiz, without making them write down these words. Um, so like there's a lot of academic language just in what we've read right here. And the fact I happen to be reviewing piecewise functions for my final exam right now, and if my students would go, oh, open, point right there, close point down there, is this piecewise? I would be in heaven. That would be a wonderful thing for them to notice. Um, so there's lots of things. So when I give this to my students, they all have TI Inspire, so they would perform this action. Um, you can't because this is virtual world right now. But what we're supposed to do is with this particular document, there's an action and a consequence. So in my Inspire, I'm gonna grab that open point that we were wondering, and then something's going to happen.
Kim, I just want to read this one to you because um, when people uh, play this back, they don't see the chat and it says the black arrow. Parametric equations coming soon. Ooh, yes, th this is a vector that's drawn on here. The, the fact that we have a line. Um, we didn't mention that this appears to be a tangent line and there's some things that I do confirm to my students. So this really is a tangent line that is on this curve. The open and point. That was a wonder. Yeah, this that came up as a right wonder. here. Is connected to some pink points. And now what do we have? Uh, the gigs up. They're all yep. saying it's a derivative. <laughs> they all know. They all they all know right here. Um, so this is actually a graph where it is plotting in the specific slopes of the tangent line as we increase. Um, well, as our X's increase, if I'm moving this from left left to right, and we are making that line. And so I do use this in my AB calculus class before they even know what a derivative is and really getting that concept across of about a graphical derivative and the meaning behind that and the fact that it changes as the points changes because these are derivatives at points. Um, but honestly, I would love to see this in an Algebra 1 class because we can talk about the tangent line. Um, in Algebra 1, we are finding slopes. Um, the fact that this line is moving along a specific path, um, there's definitely things that students can observe with that. And so that was one notice and wonder activity where recording all of the students' responses uh, really did bring a really rich conversation to what was happening and led to, well, what happens when the slopes are negative? And what happens when the slopes are positive and the fact that this line has negative values and positive values and that's the other piece where if the previous courses to calculus would really focus about these are negatives and these are positives as opposed to the line is just increasing or the line has a positive slope like there's a lot of context and lots of nuance into all of those different types of descriptors in different places in the graph and the more opportunity we have to practice that the better that would be there. And so I yeah, see a question to the materials explain how to set this up. You get this file so you don't have to set up yeah. anything. Um, you really just have to open it up on TI Inspire software and there are more of these in here as well. Um, and so obviously in my calculus class we would go through more of these but we want to try a different one with our notice and wonder. Alrighty, so our next notice and wonder is um, one that's a little bit more static. And so there's three graphs. And one's blue, one's red, one's black. Um, but what do you notice about these particular graphs and what might you wonder? And so just a little bit of think time until you hear that magic word, don't um, push enter. Well, just just wait to push enter. <laughs> it's so hard. We're so excited. Or I know like for me, like I'm writing and I want to hit enter and then it's like, oops, I'm supposed to wait. Yes, very excited. Everyone's very excited. I think it's graduation time, right? Like it's it's that time of year, at least in Arizona. It is we we are done with school in May. I know other places of the. Of the world are not and done in May. And I think you said the uh, magic word, so we have a lot I of did. people. Yep, there you go. We have a lot of um, noticing reflection. Noticing that they all contain the same pieces. Uh, noticing that there are reflections over the x-axis and over the y-axis. Um, someone notices that they're the, all the same graphs, but reflections, similar pieces. The first and the third are flipped. Oh, and the red is not a reflection. Just a single reflection. It's actually a reflection and then a translation, I believe. These are piecewise functions. 
And so lots of different things with this. Um, I did use this in college algebra and I was thinking that I was going to use this with function transformations and it, it just was much, much more than just function transformations at this point. And I'm a former geometry teacher. This is the first year that I'm not teaching geometry off of a very long stretch of teaching geometry. And um, this would be a graph. This would be a sequence that I would love to do in my geometry classes uh, for lots of different reasons. But the reason why we're bringing this one up here too, not only to practice, um, but we don't always have to use the words notice and wonder. And so we can notice some things, we can observe some things. So bringing it to my geometry students, I work, um, I connect with the biology teachers and so sophomore geometry, sophomore biology at my particular school. And there's a lot of parallels between geometry and biology and the scientific method. And so instead of noticing, I would use the word observation with my students and I would connect that back to the language that they were hearing in their geometry in their biology class, just so that they were kind of using the same thing because it's it is the same thing. You're making an observation um, and we're doing some other things with it. And with that, um, I wonder what is our question? What might be the experimental question? Um, but just to kind of like have another parallel. And then for me in geometry, I really wanted to get that word conjecture out there. And so when we make a conjecture, it's based off of some observation. We know something, we just don't guess. And so I wanted to remove the language of educated guess from my students and really kind of up the vocabulary. And with notice and wonder, I really did change it to observation conjecture if it was possible. Excellent. A uh, comment from a participant is that conjecture is a great math word. Lots of people liking uh, that word conjecture. Yes, and as students get older, it's appropriate to change some of these words, but the routine is still there. Right, right. They're um, familiar with it. Um, all right. Is it time for a new routine? Time for a new routine. So I am going to share my screen and I'm going to take it away. And uh, we're going to talk about card sorts. And um, I have to tell you, I love card sorts and um, they're very helpful uh, for lots of different things and good, good to. Um, see if students are really understanding um, content, uh, new content, and working with a math buddy, uh, a shoulder partner, is always uh, reassuring. Um, in ideal situations, we would have a tangible copy of um, the card sort, um, but with you know, COVID and things like that, we've learned that there's other ways to share these things with our students. And Kim has created a Jamboard to kind of talk about, so it, we can experience it just a little bit. And so um, I think, Kim, are you putting that into the chat? Yes, um, it is in the chat and it's going to create a copy of a Jamboard. You are forced right away to, to create a copy. And is this something that they can use or expand on, Kim, if they desire? Yeah, if you're, if you've used Jamboards before, that'll be your copy or you can keep this link will be part of the documents as well. Um, then you can use it, save it. Like Jamboards have been kind of cumbersome for me to keep track of in my Google world. Um, but I do know like once I have it in there, then you can copy it and use it from there. From there. Like my structure, my routine has been to save that one link and then when I want to use it in a lesson, then I go back to that original link and then make copies for my students. It works really nice in Google Classroom. Um, and so um, what I'm sharing with you is um, my um, actual card sort. And so I'm giving it to you in Word. Um, I'm going to give you, I believe, this um, blank copy. And that'll be in the um, webinar documents. And so it's fully editable and you can change it and use this as um, sort of template if you um, desire. 
And um, you can see here that uh, the technology that we used in creating it was, uh, again, getting the graphs from my TI Inspire. You could get your graphs from your TI-84 as well. And um, let's see if I will go and see the um, Jamboard. And um, I did not keep my Jamboard open. Want me but, to share mine? Um, yeah, go ahead and you share yours, Kim. Okay. So let's see, we'll share the screen one. So here, is it sharing? Um, you didn't take it, you didn't steal it from me. Gotcha. Oh, it's, asking, it's asking, it's asking me. <laughs> here we go. So here is my Jamboard. Um, and one thing when you do card sorts electronically and whatever platform software that you're going to use, less is more. Um, so the original card sort that was created here had six different graphs to match up. Um, if you put six graphs onto one computer screen for kids to mess with, it, it gets to be a lot for them. So sometimes, so this is actually just chunked down to the first three graphs. The other thing I've learned is that um, if you remember, Veronica shared a white document. It had a white background, um, and that's for ease of copying and stuff. But um, it's easier if there's some kind of color to um, clue kids in on how to sort things, because again, there's a lot of things on the screen. And you're just picking them up and moving those around. Yeah. Um, so. Yeah, I'm just going to pick this guy up here and figure out where it belongs. Um, and the other piece is, is that you don't have to give the kids the whole card sort either. Um, because what's going on with the green? Like what, what are, what are these meaning? Um, so sometimes I'll just have kids sort um, just by color first. And will you tell me what's going on with these yellow cards and these green cards and what the heck are these orange cards? And then it's nice to put them together as they go. So um, it's important with card sorts um, to give um, students plenty of time and opportunities to make those mathematical collect connections, just like what Kim was saying, just to kind of see what those things are. Um, the benefit of a card sort is that their um, students are using representations that are already created. So it's not, they're not spending time figuring out something. Instead, they're spending time and effort uh, with how do these go together? Um, it gives students an opportunity to analyze the representations uh, or the statements. Here we have the function and um, to uh, make those connections. And uh, so card sorts help to kind of, I'll say take away um, some of the, you know, where students get bogged down. Um, this can also be using, again, that mathematical language. And um, we want to hear students using mathematical language. And then when uh, students in my classroom have finished um, doing the card sort, then I have them get with another partner. I always have, most of the time, my students work in groups of two and then I'll have them get with another group of two and they can compare their results. And uh, that really helps, again, generate some good math discussion. Um, rational functions um, is difficult and there's lots of things, lots of aspects to it. And so this card sort is, um, I'll say relatively simple, um, but yet it still um, really has the students think about, well, how do you determine those um, horizontal and vert vertical asymptotes? and how do you know which function goes with which graph and um, it, again it's meant to not really be a calculator activity i don't want them really using the calculator um, but i did use my ti inspire um, teacher premium software to create my graphs which you could use any tool to create your graphs um, if so desired um, so um, I, i'm going to go ahead and deal it back to from I, you kim yeah i have one thing because you said have, that this was simple oh. Um, but actually it took my students quite a while to match everything up. They did the whole sort, they did the whole sort in paper with the six cards. So, you know, 
that is one thing. But the beautiful part of this is, is like, I gave this to my college algebra students. We were studying rational functions. I took away the yellow cards. I took away the green cards. And um, I just worked with the orange ones first and I hid the pink ones. Like if this was like the card, if we were doing it with physical cards and I used the exact same card sort on the same day to work with limits with my cal calculus students. And so it oh, was, awesome. a, it was a wonderful activity that, you know, goes multiple levels. I just had to change the directions and maybe the focus of things and um, it worked out really, really well. So that's the other thing to with card sorts is you might have a specific purpose, but if you add one thing or take away one thing, you can reuse it with a different purpose. Awesome, that's great. Um, all right, I'm going to share my screen and taking it away from you, Kim. And um, I just wanted to share, um, Here's some um, pictures um, that we had um, taken at a presentation and you can see the, you know, just really the thoughtfulness and um, discussion of um, our groups working together. And I just, I really like that. And uh, I hope you guys are encouraged to try a card sort. Um, and then there's, uh, we talked about the physical versus the virtual, but it still works for both. And um, I guess in terms of simple, as I meant that it was kind of simple looking, um, but still can generate lots of um, conversation uh, with our students. So, all right, uh, we are now um, ready to um, share another um, instructional routine and it's a compare and connect. And, uh, oh, benefits of card sorts, we kind of talked about that, getting students talking and um, specific teacher moves. Kim talked about that and other considerations. Uh, again, we both really like the paper, but in a virtual world, we're able to do that too. So, all right, compare and connect. That's when um, students um, are going to uh, again partner up. And this is how I've kind of in, interpreted uh, a compare and connect. This is kind of a thinking about your thinking. And you want to compare and contrast different mathematical approaches, um, how you think about something. It could be a representation. Um, a lot of times we as teachers um, share how do we think about things in our classroom. That metacognition is so important. And this activity is a way that we can get students to um, think about their thinking as well, and especially when they discuss it. So I'm going to move to my Inspire. Uh, software uh, just to show um, how I um, did it here. There's our card sorts. And uh, whoops, uh, here we go, compare and connect. So students are given a problem that can be approached from or solved using um, multiple strategies or different approach. Uh, doesn't have to follow the same uh, steps. And students prepare some type of a visual display of how they uh, made sense of the problem and why their solution makes sense. Um, so I like it when students are sitting um, back to back and they're at their desks and they are working on a problem. So I'm going to bounce back over here to go show you a picture. Um, Kim was uh, wonderful. It takes some great pictures in her class of students working. And so the desks are physically back to back. So these two um, students are partners and these two students are partners. And then after you come up with your solution, you're kind of leaning back and talking with your partner and saying, all right, are you ready? Are you ready? And then these two, they kind of whipped around uh, to show each other and you can see that they're discussing each other's responses. And it really works out to be a nice review activity that they're comparing their answers and connecting. Um, again, if there's different ways that they can get to the solution that might help uh, another student to see another strategy or to think about it in a different way, or they discuss how they got to their answer and then that helps them again uh, with their own thinking. Um, so whip around, I've used it um, for many years and uh, again, it tends to be kind of a review. It's a really, it's a great activity to do problems, but I like it um, and I utilize it as, um, as a review activity where um, students then would, um, uh, talk about those problems. 
Um, so Kim, do you have any um, comments on that or when you tried this with your students? Yes, I did. Um, so I, I thought like, I, I'll be honest, I haven't used this a lot in my classroom. That, that was one of my things that I wanted to start using them a little bit more. And it wasn't difficult to change the classroom around because my classroom is kind of like stadium seating. Everything's kind of, it's organized, but it's kind of all over the place. It was really easy for the students to switch their desks to go back to back. There was not sharing from partner to partners why they were doing the activity. And these are older students, but it's also the end of the year. So even if I had freshmen, I would believe that that would be true. They really did focus in with their partner and only after it time was called and it was time to share. So there wasn't a lot of looking from table to table because um, some of the desks were, we'll say perpendicular to the main wall and some of them were horizontal to the main wall because that's the way it fit. And it really did work out well. My desks, as you can see, are connected. There's not a lot of swiveling, but honestly, they did a really good job of sharing their boards. And they said yeah. that they had a lot of fun. And so for seniors to be saying in April that they had a lot of fun just doing some wiping activities, um, I think that's really important. And they really wanted to share and talk about the problem that they put on that board. There was lots of good conversation that you just don't get from aesthetic picture right there, but there was some good conversation there. Absolutely. That's just something I really wanted to highlight that uh, when students are comparing and connecting that it really supports um, having those mathematical conversations. Um, I've used this in an algebra one classroom through a college algebra classroom. And sometimes I will say uh, for a struggling student, uh, struggling learner that they can look then to their kind of side buddy and not with their partner and that helps to give them an idea of are they on the right track um, gives them a little bit of a reassurance and uh, it helps their confidence level um, and then in terms of management it really is just nice to use whiteboards uh, because then we it's big enough I encourage it to be big enough and you know whiteboarding is just a different um, uh, you know uh, a different feel than working with paper and pencil and um, it's a tactile, uh, different tactile um, sensation. And so uh, it is kind of special. I tended to do it on days that um, students were always a little crazy, like on Halloween or on uh, Valentine's Day or, you know, um, a half day of school. Um, sometimes you always want to, you know, what can you do? And this uh, really, you can squeeze in a lot of um, review problems in a situation like that. And um, Different ways that you can display the problems. I um, got those screenshots from my uh, TI Inspire, but um, I used to have a smart board and I love, love, love smart notebook. And so I would display them that way. And so there's lots of different ways. Again, you just need to have some type of way to um, display those problems. And um, without a piece of um, graph paper, students can easily draw an axis. And um, this is when we're using um, function transformations and um, they can easily sketch those graphs. And it's really, again, a nice visual representation. And um, I would have kids keep track and tally and, um, you know, always kind of hype them up and talk about um, a winner uh, or who's got the most or who's got five correct so far. And, um, and then at the end, everybody's a winner and, you know, everybody would get like a little piece of candy or something, but. Um, it really works good for um, uh, reviewing and taking up class time and keeping all of our students engaged. So, all right, so um, why are those instructional routines important? Well, we've talked about that it gives structure and to time and interaction. Students know what to expect and that's what's really great. It's um, a familiar format that lets students know what to expect, which I just said and provides all student opportunities to do mathematics, to discuss mathematics, to use that mathematical terminology, um, to have those math conversations. And it can even reduce the cognitive load for teachers because you're helping to get that information uh, from your class, from your students. So um, 
mathematical um, instructional routines are just really vital. And Kim and I, in this uh, evening's webinar, we really just scratched the surface. There's way more than four different instructional routines. Um, but I'm going to switch back over to this one. And um, we want to know, um, and if you would uh, join us in the chat one more time, which routine uh, would you try in your classroom first? Um, Kim and I would love to know that um, you might try one before the end of the school year. And um, if so, which one um, would that um, would that be? And it looks like we're getting lots of um, someone's tomorrow. They're going to be using uh, which one doesn't belong, Kim. Karen, Karen connects. So now we have all of them. Um, ooh, geometric awesome. sequences and which one doesn't belong. That is a fun one. Awesome. Doing some card sorts with middle schoolers. Uh -huh. Already doing that. Awesome. Another compare well, and connect. And really, compare and connect is you take a worksheet and you just do a bunch of problems. Like the, the prep can be really low key. Awesome. I really like the comment from a participant that says um, sometimes fun in a math class is foreign to many of us. And so that's another thing that I really um, try to um, create positive experiences in the math class because um, not all students um, love math the way we do. Yep. Cool. Uh, Kim, well, do you have any closing I remarks? I don't, and I don't see any questions. If anybody has any questions, you can post them in the chat, but I have a feeling that Michael has um, some cool things to tell us. Dude, thanks so much. I'm excited to begin wrapping things up tonight. It's been a quick hour. Um, as you leave the webinar tonight, you're, uh, you'll receive a brief survey. And that survey will help us uh, plan future webinars. So if you saw something tonight that you want to see more of, let us know. And if there's something that you haven't seen yet, uh, list in our you know spring webinar series, uh, let us know that too, and we'll we'll do our best to get something uh, lined up for the fall. Feel free to um, connect on any of the major social media platforms, and. Uh, also at the bottom, if you see that, if you're on Facebook, uh, there's a TI teacher community, which is great because it's it's run by just fellow teachers. Uh, and I, I love that. So uh, feel free to check that out if you're on Facebook as well. And as prom promised, One Lucky Winner tonight is receiving a graphing calculator of their choice. And tonight's lucky winner is Victoria Rizzo. So Victoria, congratulations. We'll be reaching out over email. Uh, next few days here to get some information, but start thinking about which graphing calculator you want. Big decision. Mm -hmm. <laughs> to receive a certificate of attendance, uh, click the link that's about to appear in the chat window. And also along with that link will be a link for the documents that were used tonight as well. And if those links aren't working for any reason, just hang tight. Again, you'll automatically get a follow-up email that will contain links to the documents, the certificate, as well as the recording. So if there's maybe pieces that you want to see again or you might have missed, uh, feel free to grab that recording and watch it at your own pace. And if you're watching this on demand, copy that link into your favorite browser to receive your certificate. So huge thanks to Kim and Veronica uh, for putting together all these great instructional routines for tonight. Uh, huge thanks to both of you. Thank Happy you. Happy to do it, and I hope you guys use um, the resources. Kim and I love sharing things with you guys. And thanks so much to everyone for joining us. And we hope to see you back online next week. We have two more Tuesday webinars uh, this spring, and then we'll take a little break and then pick back up sort of late summer. So uh, feel free to reach out to us uh, if you have any questions. One eight hundred TI cares, or check us our, our check our website education.ti.com 
to look at those upcoming last two webinars this spring. Have a great night, and we'll hopefully see you next week. Bye-bye.